Welcome to Zion Lutheran Church, Plumas, Manitoba, a congregation of Lutheran Church Canada. Here is our pastor with Sunday's homily. Faith, hope, and joy fill your hearts and your believing. Amen. In a recent commentary I read, the author suggested that St. Luke's Gospel is Jesus' travel narrative toward Jerusalem. In today's Gospel reading, we again hear that Jesus is traveling toward Jerusalem. In fact, St. Luke mentions the city of Jerusalem more than any other evangelist, Matthew, Mark, or John. And from very early on, chapter 9, St. Luke tells us that Jesus set his face toward Jerusalem. And from this point forward, St. Luke mentions Jesus' travel narrative to Jerusalem six more times. Why? Because Jerusalem is the very place where our Lord Christ would accomplish eternal salvation for you and all people. He did this through his passion, his death on the cross for our sins and the sin of the world, his burial in the tomb, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, all for us and our salvation. And since this salvation will be accomplished in Jerusalem by Jesus' death and resurrection, someone in the gospel lesson today asked a brave, bold question. Lord, will those who are being saved be few? And without holding back, Jesus answered, Strive to enter through the narrow door, for many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. Wow, what a word from Jesus. The way to eternal salvation is through the narrow door. So narrow is this way that it can be compared to a camel trying to go through the eye of a needle. So narrow is this way that leads to eternal life with God that it can only be accomplished through one person namely Jesus Christ our Lord. For Jesus is that narrow door that leads to salvation. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes through this narrow door of Jesus except through him. It is only through the perfect obedience of Christ according to his law and his atoning sacrifice to death on the cross for our sins and the sin of the world that anyone could ever enter through this narrow door. Jesus is the door for the sheep of his pasture, and he lays down his life to death on the cross for us, his sheep, so that we can receive his eternal gifts of life, salvation, and forgiveness by grace through faith because of his righteousness, his holiness, his death, burial, and resurrection, and ascension, all accomplished in Jerusalem. But we are still faced with that question that this someone asked. Lord, will those who are being saved be few? Jesus does not answer the question with numbers or statistics. But rather he says, strive to enter in by the narrow door. This reply may seem to wander from the scope of the original question since the man wanted to learn whether or not there would be few in number that are saved. But Jesus explained to him the way whereby he might save himself. Eternal salvation is through the narrow door of Jesus' death and resurrection for you and all people. In order to receive this salvation, God the Holy Spirit will use the Lord's gospel means of grace. The way in which God gives and bestows eternal life, forgiveness, and salvation in word and sacraments. Through these eternal gifts, all peoples and all nations of the earth will be saved. They are being saved through the word and the sacraments. For the Lord and giver of life works when and where he wills for the eternal salvation for you and all peoples. 
And who knows, there may even be people in the kingdom of heaven that many thought would not have entered through the narrow door of Jesus. And so there is still hope for all people who do not consider themselves Christians because our Lord Christ is patient with everyone. Jesus does not want anyone to perish, but all to reach repentance, confession, forgiveness of sins to eternal life through the narrow door of Jesus' death and resurrection. But at the same time, those who resist the will of God to save them in and through the narrow door of Jesus will not be at his banquet in his kingdom that will have no end. Anyone who continues to live in sin and rebellion against the will of God, anyone who does not repent, who does not confess their sin, who does not receive forgiveness through the narrow door of Jesus, death and resurrection, will not enter the kingdom of God. Their journey is a road that is broad and wide. That leads to death and destruction, to weeping and gnashing of teeth. One of the church fathers explained this broad and wide way with the following words. It is an unrestrained tendency toward carnal lust, a shameful and pleasure-loving life. It is luxurious feasts, parties, banquets, and unrestricted inclinations to everything that is condemned by the law and displeasing to God. This life is cursed and relaxed in all carelessness. Therefore, anyone who would enter in by the narrow door must withdraw from all these detestable things in order to be with Christ and keep the festival with him. But for you who believe and are baptized into Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection through this narrow door of Jesus, will enter the eternal banquet by grace through faith because of the grace and mercy and forgiveness of Jesus. For you have been washed, you've been sanctified, you've been justified by the Spirit of our God. It is only through the narrow door of Jesus' death and resurrection that you are being saved. But behold, some that are last will be first, and some first will be last. One of the church fathers taught that the first who become last are not only the faithless in Israel, but even those who are cradle Christians, Christians who were brought up in the church who were baptized in infancy and taught the Holy Scriptures, but become apathetic to those eternal gifts, transgressing against the very word of God and gifts of God that they received and that they were taught. Therefore, let us remember eternal salvation in Christ is today, not tomorrow, for when the morrow comes, we begin to say, tomorrow we will repent. Tomorrow I will change my ways. Tomorrow I will turn from my sin and rebellion. Tomorrow I will pray. Tomorrow I will read the sacred scriptures. But what about today? For there will come a time when the master of the house who is risen from the dead will return at the end of time, and he will shut the narrow door that leads to eternal life. And this stern warning from Jesus looks into the future of those standing and knocking on the door outside and the door is closed and they say, Lord, open to us. But Jesus, the risen master, will answer, I do not know where you come from. Yes, Jesus has provided eternal salvation through the narrow door of his death and resurrection from the dead. But the time will come when we no longer can repent and receive Jesus' forgiveness and eternal salvation. And if one is too late and refuses to repent while it is still today, 
then sadly they will stand outside of the door knocking and begging to the master for him to open the door. And to our surprise, Jesus denies that he even knows them and he will not open the door to them for the time of patient endurance and repentance is over and the door will be shut. And still the outsiders try to associate themselves with the master Jesus by noting that they had a foretaste of the feast to come with him, where they ate and drank with Jesus in his presence and he taught among them. But again, Jesus the master says, I tell you, I do not know where you come from. Depart from me, all you workers of evil. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy. Table fellowship with Jesus in the Lord's Supper does not necessarily mean table fellowship with him in his eternal banquet in his kingdom. Remember that some who approach the sacrament of the altar, according to the words of the Apostle Paul, eat and drink the Lord's body and blood to their condemnation and not to their benefit because they don't recognize the body of the Lord. They don't recognize the eternal gifts that are there. And so this is why we teach people to understand and fully appreciate these eternal gifts for their salvation. We desire everyone to receive the body and blood of the Lord. We don't want anyone taking this eternal medicine for their judgment. We want them taking it for their eternal salvation, for it is the medicine of immortality. And those who listen to the teaching of Jesus, yet refuse to keep his word, obey his word, will also find themselves outside the narrow door of Jesus, where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. In fact, they are, in the words of Jesus, workers of evil. They have resisted and rejected the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ that has atoned for all their evil. But thanks be to God that he opens the way of everlasting life in his heavenly banquet through the narrow door of Jesus' death and resurrection. For Jesus bestows faith in his promises, eternal life and salvation by his death and resurrection. Because our Lord Jesus Christ journeyed toward Jerusalem and accomplished this forgiveness and salvation for you and all people. Because he's accomplished the salvation, we dine with him in his heavenly banquet in his kingdom where righteousness dwells. As you receive his very body and blood and the Lord's Supper aright and by faith, you are reminded of the splendid promises he offers as a foretaste of the feast to come in his heavenly banquet. The eternal feast in heaven will be a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined according to the prophet Isaiah. At this banquet, death will be swallowed up forever, for the Lord Jesus Christ trampled down death by death and bestowed eternal life to you and all who believe in him. He is forgiven all our sins by his death, all our transgressions and all our evils, forgiven by the death of Jesus. By his glorious resurrection from the dead, the narrow door of Jesus is open for you and everlasting life. From all places and from all times, people will come from east and west, north and south, and they will recline at the table of the Lord in his kingdom that will have absolutely no end. And at that time, the Lord will wipe away every tear from every face. He will be our God, and we will be his people, and we will live in his kingdom forever and ever. God's everlasting mercy and grace is revealed in our Savior Jesus. Jesus is the narrow door by which we must be saved. And Jesus has prepared this eternal marriage feast for you and all peoples of the earth through his passion, his death on the cross for our sins and the sin of the world, his burial in the tomb, his glorious resurrection on the third day, his ascension into heaven, and the coming of God the Holy Spirit, all accomplished in Jerusalem. 
In the name of Jesus, amen. Now the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom be glory forever and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. You can find and follow Zion Lutheran Church Plumas on Facebook under Zion Lutheran or on our open Facebook page called Zion's Sermons. Please like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.